Hey guys, what's up? By Psychotron here from One Half Gazette, here with the next base destruction video. And in this one, we're taking a look at a Town Hall 9 from the Last War. A um, bit of an interesting base, kind of compact. And we're going to talk about kind of the pros and cons of having a base like this. And then we'll take a look at some attacks on it. So, uh, just getting started with the base. Uh, as always, the red is the giant bombs and the blue is the Teslas. All four of each drawn in here. And, uh, this is a compact base. It's something that you see occasionally, and it's not an anti. Th I mean, it's kind of an anti three star base, but the giant bombs are in kind of weird locations, and this is something that you sometimes see in kind of halfway anti three star bases with kind of clans that are not quite at the at the top war scene, but they're starting to transition into kind of war attacks. Is you see these double giant bombs placed like this, but they can easily be triggered from the short side or the long side. I don't know from the side that you don't want them to be triggered at because there's a defense here, there's a defense here. They can easily path and hit the giant bombs one at a time. Uh, same deal up here. This one's also right next to the queen, but you have these two defenses uh, that can, the pathing doesn't work out well uh, for it to be a double giant bomb set. So I don't recommend making your base like this, but the thing is it still can be tricky to take this out because even if you do send your hogs through like this, they're still taking a ton of damage. I mean. You have a wizard tower, a mortar. You just have all these defenses in this little, very, very small area because everything on this base is so compact. Um, all the defenses are shooting at once. So it's not quite as easy as just sending hogs through and getting the three star. Um, we'll talk about how it was eventually three starred. Uh, but one thing you want to avoid, the first attacker actually did, is you do not want to bring a big golem based kill squad into this base. And what I, what I mean by golem based is that you have multiple golems and not a whole lot of DPS behind it. So what the first attacker does, I think it's Karam, he comes in at the bottom left here and does a max attack. So drops down some quakes right like this. And for those of you who don't know, the max attack is just a go lalim attack with two golems usually, some earthquakes, and you basically use most of your spells in your kill squad, like a rage and a heal. Um, but he comes in here with the quakes opening everything up, two golems, and notice how, like I said in one of the mini tips, he drops them one at a time here. Not a huge deal, but this one mortar right here does splash damage, so you don't want to target both your golems at once. That's extra damage that you don't need to take. So he waits on the second one, and uh, as soon as he opens everything up, he drops some wizards to create his funnel, and then the second golem comes in right behind the first one, so saves it uh, some hit points there. Uh, but anyway, his heroes just make their way on in. Uh, I don't know why I circled that. Uh, his heroes come on in. I'll use uh, blue for the heroes. And uh, that's pretty much all the DPS he has, though. I mean, a few wizards are kind of in the area. But for the most part, he, he does have level 30, 30 heroes. Um, but that's still not a whole lot of DPS when we're talking about a kill squad for this compact of a base. And the problem is, when you do that, the golems take so much damage that the kill squad can't really move fast, move through the base quick enough to uh, get the value of the golems tanking. These golems bust really quickly with those Teslas, the queen right there. Um, so the golems go down really quickly, but the kill squad, they take a while to get through the storages and stuff. And another problem is he didn't bring a poison spell and there were two witches in the CC. So the witches just destroyed his king because the king can't get through the skeletons quick enough. The queen right before she dies takes out the skellies but, um, and the witches, but by that time, I think both the air defenses are still up here. Uh, the enemy queen, I believe, does go down, but doesn't get any air defenses for it. And even if the, <clears throat> even if you brought a poison and the witches went down fairly quickly, I think he still wouldn't have gotten it um, because it is a little bit of a push here to get both these air defenses. They're not that accessible. One's kind of hidden behind the town hall. But furthermore, and I think more importantly, um, you have these expos, the wizard towers, Teslas, all the point defense and the little ring around the outside. That's all doing damage to the golems. That's going to get them busted really quickly. And then they'll be on the heroes. And there's not a whole lot of time to do stuff. So you want to avoid bringing two, three golems for this base. If you do bring a kill squad, uh, you want to have more DPS like Valks. Or I guess witches aren't used that much. But you want to have something that's going to do more damage and uh, less golems. Because the golems are just tanks. They just buy your troops time. But they're not a good investment when you have this compact of a base typically. 
Uh, there are exceptions, obviously, but for the most part, that's a good rule to follow. We'll go ahead and take a look at the attack. Um, from here, basically, he deploys his Lava Hounds and Balloons, but it's pretty much over because the air defenses are still up, and he kind of works his way around here, and they do go down. Uh, could have dropped one haste, and or could have not brought a haste and brought a poison instead, but like I said, I still don't think that would have made the difference. We'll take a look at the attack, though. <clears throat> wasn't wasn't that bad of a plan. Um, good try to Karam, and then we'll see what the next attacker did. Be right back with the attack. Okay, here we go with the attack. Uh, you can see here he has the one golem in the CC, one of his own, and like I said, no need to drop the second golem for the funnel because everything in the area is being tanked by the uh, golem. So it goes ahead and waits on that second one just to save it some DPS. Right there he does drop it, uh, but just a little bit of a delay there. Not a big deal, just kind of a thing that, that can help sometimes, especially if there's wizard towers. The quakes go down. He actually does not open up the second air defense, that compartment. I think he's planning on the queen getting it. But right here, everything's moving forward, and these golems are taking a ton of damage. Um, from the CC troops, from the Teslas, the Expos, Wizard Towers. He does have the heal, but that's not going to do a whole lot. And uh, the Poison spell, not having that, just kills him. Because there's Plus the Skelly Traps, in addition to the Witches, that so many little troops running around. Uh, the King cannot nearly to keep up with them. And uh, the King goes down pretty quickly. The Queen is a little bit better off because she shoots a little bit faster. And she will get these Witches, but by this time, um, the Golems have been roasted. Everything's kind of been... Uh, taken out besides the queen so pops the ability she's going to get through these witches but that's all she's going to get both air defenses still up and um, you can see the golems busted pretty quickly in regardless of the poison spell like i said i don't know if it would have been a successful push if he would have gotten those two air defenses but anyway uh comes in here with the lava hounds the balloons just going to target these defenses a deployment's great here no nothing i would say that uh cost him here it's just that all the four air defenses are still up and uh, he, his three Lava Hounds can't deal with that. So uh, everything makes its way through, gets a little bit of the space taken out. Go ahead and go times two as, it, uh, as things start to go down. But uh, good, good a try to Karam. I mean, we'll see, I, or we won't see, but I don't know. The Poison Spell might have gotten it, but like I said, Golem-based kill squads, not the best for these compact bases. You need more DPS. The Golems go down uh, much quicker. Therefore, they're not getting you as much value for the 30 troop space, in my opinion, at least. So let's take a look at the next attack, um, the plan for it first, and then we'll take a look at the attack itself. Be right back with that. Okay, so the next attacker is Yaji, and he's coming at this base a little bit differently after watching the attack that just happened. Uh, you can see here, these four air defenses don't appear to be clustered too much, but what he's going to do is drop down some quakes right here, pretty much open up the entire base besides that one air defense and just let a bunch of Valks and his heroes move through the base and then just kind of swarm it with balloons on the outside working his way around clockwise. I'll get a little more detailed in a second but let's talk about why it works and what specifically he did. So one thing you'll notice at the beginning is he does bring two golems and you might be wondering well I mean we just looked at the last attack that used two golems and you said you know not to do that. But his kill squad is so much bigger in proportion to what Karam brought. Um, there's so much more troop space being invested in the kill squad that the two golems didn't make up nearly as high of a percentage of the kill squad that uh, it did in the last attack. And the two golems, furthermore, are necessary because there's so much initial point defense. There's, uh, first of all, even when he drops these golems, there's four point defense, I think. These four are all on the golems. Um, so it's not like he, his Valks can just walk into the base. They're going to be taking damage as soon as they're dropped unless something's taking for them. So the two golems are giving these Valks some initial leeway to make their way through the base. And when he hits this area, <clears throat> uh, there's a ton of point defense too when you get to the Expo, uh, the Teslas. And like I said, the Wizard Towers can damage Valks if they're not under heal. So there's a lot of damage in this area as, right as soon as you start entering the base or even getting up to the walls of the base. And that's why the two golems are needed. If this is an anti three star base, and you see this a lot on the channel probably, people don't even bring a golem. Just let the Valks get in there, beat through the wall, and uh, start healing them up as you go. But in this certain uh, instance, the golems are necessary to even let the Valks have a chance at getting into the base where they can start to do their work. Uh, one thing to note is that this wall here really helps out because he's gonna drop his jump spell right like that. 
after the two golems go down and then the funnel is created with the wizards, obviously. But he drops the jump spell like that. And we talked about these anti-valk bases. You want these long slivers of compartments on the outside. Um, but this wall actually works against the attacker because it helps funnel the golems into this next area. Um, if it wasn't there, they probably would run over here, try to get uh, these two buildings taken out because they're touching and those are magnets to Valks. And if there was more to lure them this way, that would really help out the defender. But these little walls on the outside that, compart that make these compartments actually work against the defender when it comes to Valks here because it's going to help funnel them directly into the base. I talked about this in my uh, mini tip video earlier today. Uh, if the base has these small compartments, it's really easy to maneuver Valks in and out of it. So the jump goes down, the Valks are going straight in, and the two golems, are basically they buy the Valks enough time to get in here at somewhat full health, uh, use the rage and the heal that he has, because one spell is the jump, there's four quakes, and then a rage and a heal. And he doesn't bring any poisons. He goes ahead and does the CC quake plus his own quake, or three of his own quakes. That way, he the quake only takes up two spots. If you know, I've explained this earlier. Uh, by not bringing the poisons, he can uh, t take a quake for the same value as a jump. And the reason he doesn't need the uh, poison spell is because the Valks do splash damage. They're gonna run up to those archers, those skeletons, those witches, and one swing will take out everything in the area. So the Valks are great against these kind of garbage CC compositions where you have witches and archers and stuff like that. Uh, you don't need the poison spell usually because the Valks can burn through them as long as they're not being targeted directly. I think the, the CC troops were on the golems, plus he had a rage and a heal going down. So the Valks were taken care of and they're gonna make their way to the base. Now, he is getting access to three air defenses just right off the bat. There is this fourth one up here that's not quite as available. And that's why this base might not obviously look like a base you would want to use Go Valo on. But he works. He starts the balloons here and just works his way around. So the last area to take out is up here. By then the kill squad's already uh, sorry. By then the kill squad's already moved up to that direction. I think the queen gets this, so he's free to deploy his last few balloons like that. But when you see these bases that have all this point defense in like a ring around the outside, uh, you should still think Go Valo. Even if the air defenses aren't all like compact in the core, like you might uh, ideally want them to be, you can still use some quakes to open up the base and access most of them. So great, uh, great plan, great attack, and hope I explained everything uh, that makes sense. So we'll go ahead and take a look at the attack and see exactly how this was done. All right, here we go with the attack. You can see he has the uh, two golems of his own elected to bring the Valks in the CC, which is fine. Just kind of a preference choice, whichever you think needs a little bit more uh, hit points or damage or whatever. So the two golems go down. You can see they're taking damage right away from all this, uh, all these defenses in the area. So it's not like uh, these golems aren't needed. And he's bringing 10 Valks. That's a lot of damage coming from those Valks. So the golems aren't being wasted in their tanking. Um, they're getting much more value than they were in the last attack because uh, they're not just dying for nothing. The Valks are actually using their tanking. And right here, the Valks get out a little bit in front, but under Rage, they get to those CC troops so fast, they're already on that Witch. The heal, that was a good placement on the heal because the Valks were actually going down pretty quickly. They got out in front. Uh, one Golem might have gotten the job done, but uh, two just to be safe and maybe to deploy the Valks a tad bit later, just so the Golems get out in front a little bit better. But here come the balloons. Uh, like I said, that fourth air defense hasn't gone down yet, but the Queen's on her way. And even if a few of your balloons get shot down, that's fine. They're not good cleanup troops anyway. Um, better to get those defenses down early and take the damage off your kill squad than try to save a few of these balloons because it's not ne necessary to do. Uh, the last few balloons converging on that Tesla over there, but this base was wrecked in a very short amount of time. You can see everything's down. And I'll go ahead and go times two as the Tesla goes down and then it's just clean up from there. So awesome attack to Yaji. Uh, the moral of the story for this base destruction video though is when you see these compact bases, they might have weird double giant bomb spots, but don't take them lightly. They can uh, be tricky. So make sure that if you're gonna bring a lot of golems and a lot of tanks, you have DPS behind that to get value from the golems. Otherwise, they'll go down quickly and uh, your heroes aren't enough to really capitalize on the investment of the golems. So keep that in mind and uh, hopefully these tips help. Uh, thanks for watching this space destruction video. I'll see you guys later. Bisectatron out.